Sunday. The message on Sunday, I want to listen to it myself. Because I believe something happened on Sunday. When I shared, particularly on deliverance and the power of the air of imagination. It is what I call a kingdom changing message. If you understand where the battle begins, you will know how to win. Win the battle in your imagination and you win it in the physical. Amen? Tell your neighbor, win the battle in the imagination and you win it in the physical. The battle is in the mind. Amen? That is where the battle starts. The enemy begins there. Every sin is conceived there. And once it is not dealt with, it is executed in the physical. And you cannot deal with deliverance without dealing with sin. Because sin gives the access for the demons. Whether it be generational or it be personal. Amen? So I'll just share something with you for about 15 minutes or so and we shall close for tonight. I want you to go home rejoicing. Hallelujah. Many of you have come. If I had a choice, we would just rejoice this weekend. But many of you, some of you flew out of town from all over. Some of you are members of our church online came for this ministry. So I want to make sure that you don't go without us dealing with it. Amen? Hallelujah. So that's why I'm insisting that we should get it done. Praise the Lord. So let's go to Isaiah 14, verse 12 to 17. That's where we ended. Let's read. One, two, three, go. Oh, Lucifer, son of the morning, how cut down to the ground, you will weaken the nations. Amen? We said on Sunday, Satan has two goals. What's the first goal? To make sure you don't get saved. That's number one. That's his goal. His strategy is to make sure you never get saved. The second goal is what? What? Inefficient. Thank you. It means if you get saved, he makes sure you become as inefficient of a Christian as possible. And for many of us, the second is our battle, our problem. Thank you. The first, he, was, he lost that battle. And may he remain completely a loser in your life all the days of your life. May you never turn away from God. May you say like this man of God who was struggling with a sin in his life. He says, Satan, I would rather die than go to hell. He refused to go to hell. He said, I would rather die. He had battles. He was struggling because he used to live a very sinful life. And he haunted him when he came to Christ. So he was struggling with it. One time he lay on his bed. He shouted, Lord, I have chosen heaven. Whether this, this desires and this thing is haunting me. One thing I know, I belong to Jesus. And I refuse to go to hell. So the battle is fiercer once you are in Christ because Satan knows if you become an effective Christian, you have become a tool for the destruction of his kingdom. Therefore, he fights you, tool, he fights you and makes sure that you never become as efficient as you should. He makes Christianity very difficult and boring. You think Christianity is the do's and don'ts? No. God is to be enjoyed. God is to be enjoyed. Christianity is not boring. It's an exciting story. I am a happy Christian. I have never regretted one day why I gave my life to Christ. I have no attraction for the people of the world. When they start making their thing all over the world, I feel sorry for them. I don't get attracted to them. I don't get attracted to their money, to their things. Because I know where I'm going. 
I know whom I've believed. And I know that the, the, that the pleasure they are going through is just a short leave. But a horrible life of eternal damnation is coming. Where the Bible says they will cry that they will die and they will not die. You don't know how much God loves you. The other day I have been thanking God that God saved me. I said, Lord, I was not better than the others. I was in tears when I was doing this. I said, Lord, I was not better than the others. How I got saved, I don't know it. I was one of the first in my family here, Apostle Jaffo. The first. God saw me and showed me mercy. As a little boy of 13, no, nobody in my family at that time was saved. My mother is here. She was not. Nobody. And I remember the day I gave my life to Christ. Oh, persecution started. They thought I've joined a cult. That cult called Jesus. The born agains. They call it the born agains. So they were angry. They said, born agains, these people are dangerous. <laughs> I told them I was safe. I told them I would be very happy. I said, Mom, I will be a wonderful boy now. I now have Jesus. I will no more lie to you again. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> Just as though they were saying, give me the old liar. <laughs> but I'm telling you people, everything changed. I have been so grateful for God saving me. You don't know how good God has been good to you. You don't know what you have been saved from. You know, is this lady, Mary Basta, who shared, I heard her spoke just before she went to be with the Lord. You know, she has gone to be with the Lord. Maybe Mary Basta has gone to be with the Lord. Just before she went, she went, to, uh, uh, she, uh, she went to be with the Lord, she came, she was sharing, and she talked about a thing that frightened me. She said when she was in hell, as the Lord was taking her, taking her there, and they say in one of the times when the Lord took her there, the screaming haunted her for months. The horror and pain. And then she said she had to turn and look up while she was in hell. She said, do people on earth know what is waiting for them here? Yeah. That when she came back, she fell as to, to run in the street like a mad woman shouting, there is hell. It is as though she fell as to point at everyone. Do you know there is hell? Do you know there is hell? Do you know? She fell as to go out and shout. She said, people act as though they have sinned. They will not answer for their sins. She said, they act not knowing that something frightful is waiting for them here. And she said, preach the gospel. Preach the gospel as much as you can. Because without it, men will go to hell. And she said one thing that shocked her for days was when she saw a woman who has been there for over a thousand years. An Israelite woman. She was crying because the Lord was taking her to a different part of hell. She saw Hitler there. And she saw members of the third Reich in hell. They, they have their own part. Horror. Screaming. And she said in one of the areas she saw this woman who has been in hell for over a thousand years. She was a soothsayer. Palm reading type. Soothsayer. The one who seeks medium. Wish doctor. Call it any name. But she was a worshiper of the devil. And something, she was crying there and weeping. She turned as she was passing with Jesus. She shouted and said, help me, help me. I've been here for a thousand years, for over a thousand years. But every day seems as though the pain is increasing. And this lady was shocked. He said, these people will lie on earth. That hell is for some time. And the Lord Jesus said, as God is eternal, so eternal is his judgment. Yes. He said, it is so horrible that God had to die for you. The fact that God had to die for you and I is to reveal how horrible judgment is without him. 
And she said, if men know, they will begin to run and to run to Jesus and to cry out. Every sexual desires will leave you. Every immorality, every form of evil, you will run. Every desire for, 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 for drugs, for alcohol and the rest, it means nothing when compared to eternity. You get to understand that when, and then she said, the fact that it takes a few years on earth to prepare for countless numbers of eternal years, it's a frightful thing. Because people of God, sin is to be feared. Sin is to be feared. And she said, while she was there, people were dropping from Canada, from Russia, from China. They were coming in their numbers like lightning. They would fall there and they would begin to shout. They were coming. So many from all over. He said, that's how when they die, they drop here. And then they believe. They say, there is no unbeliever in hell. All of them now believe. All the atheists. Who have gone there. They believe that God exists. But it's too late. All of them now know that hell exists. They have preached and say it doesn't exist. They get there and they, and they find it. If you have Jesus. Cling on Jesus like a madman. Let me tell you there's nothing out there. And Satan's strategy is to pull you and to make it look attractive. It's a lie. It's a huge lie. Your God loves you. That's why Jesus died for you. Hallelujah. An open door has been released for us in America to preach the gospel. God is showing us a time of grace. And I announce to you a time of grace has come over America. And to God be the glory. So this is the time to shout and to preach the gospel. Tell you now, it is time to preach the gospel. So you will weaken the nation. So satanic strategy is to weaken you. To make sure you never become effective. To make sure you die with regrets. You enter heaven regretting, I wish I, I, wish I served him more. I wish I served him more. I wish I gave my all to him. And the regrets in heaven cannot be compared in words. The Bible says he will wipe away the tears from our eyes. It's tears of regret. It's tears of where? Because in heaven you will see and know that you had to be there, but you ended here. The problem is that your position in heaven cannot be changed. When you have bread, that's the time to live for him. Amen. And to be mad for him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not time to fight your brother. It's time to fight the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. It's time to fight. The it's time to pour yourself and become who God called you to be. Amen. For we are, we, as the Bible says, we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. To give account of all what we have done with our bodies. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor it's time to run the race. In Jesus name run the race. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's a strategy to weaken you. Make sure he does not succeed. I want to tell you one secret. Use the weapon of tongues. I will never overemphasize the importance of praying in tongues. Because praying in tongues releases the Holy Spirit to fight the battles for you. Are you baptized in the Holy Spirit? Pray in tongues for one hour a day at least. You will never live in sin. You will never be comfortable with sin. Mm -hmm. Some people are saying it's true. What the devil does, he stops you from praying in tongues so that he may control your mouth and control your mind. Because statistics have shown that the one who prays in tongues a lot affects his mind. 
they discover, people of God, that those who pray in tongues, I just discovered it the other time and I was so, I was so happy I worshiped the Lord. Do you know that those who pray in tongues, and I want everyone to hear, if you're, if you're over 50 and maybe over 60, 70, look at me. <laughs> this is for you. This is for you, wherever you are. Online or here. If you want never to have a problem with your mind, where you forget and start wondering, ooh, ooh, knock it in your head. Somebody told me he hit his head like this. If you don't want to ever get to that, pray in tongues for at least one hour a day. They have discovered that those who pray in tongues for at least an hour a day reverse damage of brain. The reverse problem of memory. Are you getting me? So if you want to deal with all summer, which will never be a portion. Amen. Dementia or what, 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 what. I announce to you, pray in tongues at least an eye day. I, I'm just amazed how God has given us everything to help us. Amen. It reversed the damage on your brain. Amen? And then they said the other thing that they discover is that once you pray in tongues, I've shared this before, but this will help you. Once you pray in tongues a lot, you know what happens? You also increase your immune system. It means God has given us, scientists have now discovered it. It was, it was in a scientific magazine. Yes, where they took people who pray in tongues for at least an hour a day, and they took people who don't. The study was done with about maybe 21 of them on separate side, and they discovered that the 21 on this other side who pray in tongues, their immune system went far higher, 400 times stronger than the ones without. So I'm telling you, God has given you a secret. Against Corona. <laughs> against any pandemic. So people, people of God, you have been anointed to win. God has not left you without weapons of warfare. Tell your neighbor you have been anointed to win. Tell your neighbor you have been anointed to win. Hallelujah. So therefore, I'm giving you a secret. When he is there to weaken you, you should not be weakened. You should be strong. Amen. You should instead weaken his kingdom. Tell your neighbor, I will weaken his kingdom. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I was telling my wife that God has given us who invade Mozambique with an invasion that they have not known before. Because a new era has come. We are going back to Mozambique early next month. Monday. We live in Monday. And we are going for a very important mission. Church planting mission. We are meeting about 3,000 pastors and we are ministering in a church that has about 18,000 people. And in this church, the pastor... We're planning a two-day event, but they changed it to four days. They said, you cannot bring such a man of God here and not use him. So make sure you use him. I was praying. I said, Lord, what do I preach? You know what the Lord told me? Before you leave there, make sure that you get 18,000 people to begin to pray in tongues for at least one hour a day. And Mozambique will be transformed. Yeah. Hallelujah. The youth will be forever changed. I want to tell you it's one of my secrets. How did I survive as a young man when I came to Christ? I went through the university. And, I, and no matter how the temptation, God protected me. How did I survive? The secret is praying in tongues. And the word of God. Spent time reading the word. I used to read about a hundred chapters a day. Paul. Where's Paul? 
And I tell you people to read 10 chapter, you cry. Especially David. Where's David? David is the chief crier. It's a 10 chapter. Hey, daddy, can we do five? A hundred. A day. You read it until you get out like this, you are drunk with the word. And you are walking like this, your mind is with the word. I'm telling you, we are made to be affected by God's word and to be affected by his presence. You are so soaked with the word in a way that you, your mind is ringing the word. Why others are having nightmares, I'm having dreams of the word. When I get to people, I say, oh, I had a nightmare, something was pursuing me. I never knew nothing pursuing me in the night. <laughs> No strange thing ever pursued me in the night because I was full of the word. If you want to be pursued by God before you sleep, read the word. Amen. Watch ISIS on TV and you sleep. A man will be looking for you to cut your neck. <laughs> You'll be fleeing in the dream and you find yourself you cannot run well. And the man is catching you. And you shout, ah, and get up in the night. <laughs> We're not made to have nightmares. We're made to be nightmares destroyers. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Child of God, you are blessed. Shout with me, I am blessed. Say, I am blessed. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let's continue and conclude. It says what? One, two, three, go. Verse 13. You cannot change it. Or oh, it's not changing. Do you have your Bible with you? Let's read it. You people should correct that. That's embarrassment. <laughs> should not be happening in Jesus' name. Verse 13 is under. Okay, I can have it here. I have it here. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation, on the farthest side of the north. That is pride. And let me tell you, pride comes before a fall. See anybody who has fallen, you will discover that there was pride there. Because the person refused to be helped. When a man says, I know it all, be afraid. Amen? Be what? Be afraid. Continue. Can someone read verse 14? Just read it from your Bibles. You got there? Okay. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. I will ascend above the height of the I will be like. I will be like. Remember, it's like. I will be like. Because there's only one Most High. <laughs> there's only... The rest is the wanna be. <laughs> Are you getting it? Tell your neighbor there's only one most high. The rest is the one to be. <laughs> the one to be like the most high. But there is one most high. The great God Jehovah. Raise your hands and say, Thank you, Jesus. Shout it, thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Now let's continue. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol to the lowest depths of the pit. That's it. You shall be brought down to where? It means to hell. Hell was made for the devil and his angels. You remember that's what Jesus said? Jesus said he will say to those, he will say to those on his left, go to where? 
To those on the left, what will he say? Depart from me. Go to eternal damnation. Prepare for the devil and his angels. Not for you. It was never prepared for man. That's why man going there is his greatest disaster. Hell was never for you. Amen? Continue. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you, saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook the kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners? Who did not open the house of his prisoners? And that is where I want you to see. Why do, people, why do we need deliverance? Let me tell you something. It's because every spiritual truth cannot be received except by faith. Tell your neighbor, every spiritual truth must be received by faith. In those days, many of us in America believe that all the demons are in Africa. Or they are somewhere in Asia. I'm telling you, there are more demons in the West. And you find the difference in Africa is that their own is out there. <laughs> they show it. <laughs> yeah, it is hidden. It is covered. The worship of the enemy is covered. You get what I'm saying? But it's there, very strong. Secret powers meeting are being held all over the West to control men. The type of control that happens in the world is so contrived that is, you have to look at it well to find it. It's subtle, thank you. So the prisoners, the enemies of, well, I mean, the, 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 what the devil considers his enemies, he doesn't let go his captive. It means once you sin, you have become the devil's captive. The Bible says, whosoever commits sin is what? Is of the devil. He is a slave to sin. And whosoever commits sin is of the devil. For the devil sin from the beginning. Now listen carefully. Of the devil means that you belong to him. Every act of sinning pulls the Satan. And every act of sin is not just you sinning. It is an act of entering into somebody's calm and stealing his good. Adultery doesn't belong to you. Wash Satanism doesn't belong to you. Bitterness doesn't belong to you. Unf uh, unforgiveness doesn't belong to you. I'm naming things that... Demons hang on. Stealing doesn't belong to you. Murder doesn't belong to you. Addiction doesn't belong to you. All those things are the devil's gift. That's why if such a thing has happened in your family, most often it goes to the fourth generation. When you sin, you don't sin for yourself. You sin for you and your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren to the fourth generation. That is why deliverance is not a choice, it's a must. If there is a meeting, Satan hate is this meeting. Because the devil will do everything for you not to be here. What we are doing here is not a joke. Because let me tell you something, Satan is not your friend. And there is nothing in you that is of him that will ever help you. Are you getting it? Are, are you understanding? Everything that is of the devil that is in you can never help you. It is there to destroy you. Never, 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 never negotiate with Satan in anything in your life. And there may be areas in your life that you don't know you need deliverance from. It may just be that rage. You find yourself getting angry. You can't control it. 
You are winning in every area of your life, but that area, once you see yourself, on, uh, you get to a level you cannot control yourself, another power has taken over. It may be what I call um, depression. Depression is demonic. It's, you are quiet like Presbyterian Church. Depression is demonic. Are you getting it? There are some people who cannot afford but to be depressed. And the more you are depressed, the more you invite the demons in. Jesus came to set captives free. Hallelujah. Tell you about Jesus came to set captives free. And the secret to deliverance is rest. Tell your neighbor, rest. It means don't be agitated. When you're agitated, you make the, the demons very happy. Just slowly accept God's victory in your life. Don't just jump and say, oh, I need deliverance. Oh, I must be delivered now. No, no, no. If you have stayed with the demons for five years, you can wait for two more days. I tell people, don't act as though the whole world is collapsing. Somebody <laughs> once came to me. He said, this demon must go. It must go. Said, right now, right now. I said, why? He said, no, 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 no. It has to go. Came to this my office. And, and I started ministering. And I discovered that I had a very important meeting coming up. I knew it was the devil. I said, no, listen. Derek Prince said in his book that he tells people, if you have struggled for five years with this spirit, you can wait for two days to be delivered. This thing of now, 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 now. Because it can make you unnecessarily miserable. Remember, the ability of being in control is of God. You are in control even of the demons that are tormenting you. You refuse to submit to their pressures. Amen? Because Jesus is Lord over your life. A child of God should not be out of control. Tell your neighbor, I will not be out of control. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout a shout of victory. Shout a shout of victory. Amen. So he's the owner of sin. If you get involved, that's why when they talk about generational sins, you were never there when your ancestor did it, isn't it? Were you there? How come you're affected? How come? Because once your ancestor sin, the Bible says sin goes to where? third and fourth generation. It affects you. The great thing is that righteousness goes to a thousand generations. That's why God will never break his covenant with Israel. Do you see the difference? Because Abraham was righteous. And because Abraham was righteous, Israel will always be part of God's covenant. It goes to a thousand generations. How good our God is. So therefore be righteous so that your righteousness will go toward a thousand generations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Tonight is a night of your victory. And your victory will begin tonight. I sense freedom in the air. I sense freedom in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. Shout a shout of victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So therefore I explain to you that whosoever sin has something of the devil. And I, I said last Sunday that my wife has, listen, my wife's book. You have a book? Okay, let me use this book. Okay. This is his book, isn't it? Let's say he wrote this book. It's a book you wrote and you write a book. Amen. I was saying the Lord is telling me to tell you he will write a book. 
So you better get ready. Hallelujah. So he wrote this book. And if you take it and okay, let me know use Jasmine. Let me use somebody else. Okay. Sister Tina, without your permission, it will not happen in Jesus' name. Takes this book and reprints it. What happened? He has violated what? Your copyright. You go after her. Once you take somebody, you take sin and take sin that is not yours, you have violated Satan. You belong, you have touched something that belongs to him. Even God will recognize Satan's authority over sin. Are you getting it? Satan is the founder of sin. He owns it. Therefore, don't touch it. If you touch it, you are a thief. Are you getting it? You touch sin, you are. I want you to write it in your mind today. Touching sin means that you are. You are stealing what? Satan's good. So don't touch it. Because once you touch it, he will come after you. And Satan has no free lunch. Once you touch it, he put his mark in you. And his mark is what we deal with called demons. The demons are there to show a mark. You know, a woman of God shared a story. He said that, said that the Lord opened her eyes to see in the realms of the spirit. And the Lord showed her how demons attack people. He said, for example, when you go to a store and steal. Let's say you steal, uh, I don't know what. <laughs> Shoes. Put in your pocket and you start running. You know what happened? Demons follow you and mark you with theft. They mark you with what? Theft. And something has happened. You have been changed, but you don't know you have. The next time, stealing becomes easier for you because you are marked with the act of stealing. Are you getting it, children? Don't steal that bread the mama said don't touch. Don't go and cut it and put it back to look as though nobody has touched it. That cake. Children, are you hearing? Cookies. Sometimes they'll take the cookies and they'll make sure it is fixed. So that you don't notice that one cookie is missing. Are you getting it? Children, it's theft. So don't do it. Amen? Hallelujah. So therefore, once you do it, you give room for Satan to mark you. And soon you'll find yourself, you cannot do but steal. You'll find yourself, you just can't, you just find yourself, no way. And soon, it will haunt you. That's why deliverance come now to force that enemy out. But when the enemy is forced out, don't go back to the sin. Amen. Amen. My wife remember the story of a young man we ministered to. He was dealing with drugs. We ministered to him. This guy, some of you know him. This guy was free. It was a I mean, she came and lived with, he came and lived with us. My wife ministered deliverance for two, three days. Addiction is very demonic. One of the most wild demons I've ever seen. It was fierce. Because it was mixed with sexual addiction because he used to give himself in order to make money for drugs. I was shocked to hear that. So it was hard. We were ministering to him. He's from the one that I told you the story how he had his hand tied together, held his hand like this, and he was a strong guy. So I was wondering why his hand was like this. I said, oh, precious, when he became conscious, I said, why is your hands like this? He said, the demons are telling me to give you a slap. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to hold my hand like this so that I don't do it. So I said, thank you for holding your hand like that.
foolish. Telling a man to give me a slap. You foolish demons. <laughs> but the demons came out. And he was free. This guy was, I mean, they were coming out. He was vomiting. He was, for three days, completely free. He went and put heroin and he did not walk. Put cocaine. For one week, he struggled to be high and he could not get high. He had to cry out for it to happen. And from that time, he started going drink until he died of drug overdose. He told us the story himself. He said, for one week, I struggled. I just could not. People thought something was wrong with me. I knew what it was. The demon had left. And I struggled until that the last day he forced himself into it and then the Spirit came back. And that is how he finally died. I'm drawing your attention to something, people of God. Once you are delivered, you'll be free. Do your best never to go back. You can tell the devil, I would rather die than do what you want me to do. I will not do it. In Jesus' name. And the Lord will see your determination and God will back you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout a shout of victory. Shout a shout of victory. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Shout a shout of victory. Amen. When deliverance comes, you begin to enjoy freedom. And the freedom of God is sweeter. My wife shared her deliverance story. Many people have been calling and talking about it. Some, somebody told me about it. But let me tell you, the goodness of God, what I saw happen to my wife, I tremble. She was really sick. We're planning, you, might, you will have heard that we, we, that we are in the hospital. Really in pain, screaming in pain. And yet, we discovered that it was demonic. Thank God for a woman of faith like her. Amen. And the spirit left and she was free. It was four hours of battle. That's why I announced to you tonight. If you want freedom, you must be patient. And if you are here, God has brought you to a church that believes in freedom. That believes in deliverance. And you will be set free. You are in the right place. Tell the boy you are in the right place. Because of time, I will end today. We will be talking on how demons come in, possibly on Sunday. Since I could not get a fact about whether you want to come tomorrow, tomorrow or not. <laughs> Hallelujah. So should we hold it tomorrow morning? Who are the yes? The same hands. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let me let you rejoice tomorrow. Somebody say, uh, who said that? Okay, you know what? You know what? For your sake, we'll meet you at 10. Amen. Media 10 will minister for one hour only. For anyone who wants to come, please come. If you are hungry enough, some of you came, drove from far for this ministry. I want to make sure we complete it. And once we continue, for some of you who don't want to come, we will not go back. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> like that. We will not go back. You know why we will not go back? You know why? Because it is so long and so much information that we cannot rush. You get what I'm saying? So we won't go back. You have to be here tomorrow at 10. It will be 10 to 11. Amen? So tomorrow we will meet here at 10 to 11 because 
I feel strongly in my spirit. I was ready to cancel it because I feel as to cancel it, but my spirit is telling me, don't do it. The flesh want to. <laughs> Believe me, I don't want to do it. My flesh. But the spirit is saying, do it. Amen? So we are doing it for the sake of the glory of God and for the sake of the people for whom Jesus died. But tonight, I'll pray for you that something will happen. Are you ready? I want you to stand up and pray with me. Just repeat after me. Say, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, because you have disarmed principalities and powers. Every demon in my body is illegal. Whether it be demon of barrenness, whether it be demon of, 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 of adultery, of fornication, or sexual spirit of any kind, whether it be, no matter the spirit, you are illegal. Therefore, in Jesus' name, demons of infirmities, demons of cancer, demons of diabetes, every demon of any sickness, I renounce you. And in the name of Jesus, I proclaim you will never be comfortable in my body. I renounce you in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit I proclaim God's liberty and I proclaim that he who the son says free is free indeed therefore in Jesus name every foul spirit you are illegal your manifestations I lie therefore in Jesus name every demonic power haunting my life I render you illegal and I proclaim you will have no access I destroy every agreement between me and between me and you I cut from this day my allegiance with you and I proclaim that you, that you don't belong to me. I belong to Jesus. My spirit, my soul, and my body are the properties of the living God. You spirit of early death, I shall not die. In the name of Jesus, I will live to bring glory to God. In the name of Jesus, you spirit of disfavor, causing others to hate me and avoid me I renounce you and every other demon of any kind this day I proclaim you are just a name but there is a name which is above every other name and at the name of Jesus every day you shall bow you foul spirit you shall bow Therefore, in Jesus' name, I proclaim victory. I proclaim triumph over your strongholds. In the name of Jesus, I declare by the power of the blood of Jesus, my freedom. And I say in Jesus' name, foul spirits, from this night, you begin to come out. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Raise your hands and begin to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We give you the glory. We thank you because a new era is beginning in this place. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you worship, Lord. We give you glory. In the name of Jesus, every spirit, whether it be spirit of blindness, whether it be spirit of any kind, I decree that your end has come. 
and you will never, never be comfortable in the life of God's people. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare freedom tonight and I proclaim the beginning of a mighty victory. Because Father, you are God and your power none can challenge. We worship you for your victory. And I decree that this weekend will not only be remembered as the weekend where the altar of Moloch of abortion was destroyed over this nation, but where demonic altars were destroyed in the life of God's people. I decree freedom. I decree liberty in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Shout a shout of victory. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So tomorrow morning, we'll do it. Just sacrifice. Amen. And you will not regret it. Tomorrow morning and then Sunday morning we'll conclude. Hallelujah. We'll do as much as we can. And then in the deliverance conference, we'll handle everything. Amen. So we'll just do as much as we can. For some of you who have attended my deliverance conference, don't say, oh, you forgot this. No. No. There's no time to condense everything. But we'll do as much. We'll begin it and we'll conclude it in our deliverance conference. Amen. Let's pray and bless. Bless our Sunday service.